Hi, everybody. We're back again. And we got Northwoods Peach Tree. Yeah, yeah. That's my uh, tonight, we're going to talk about conservation and conservation of wildlife. Why it's very important that we hunt. Um, like we're going to start out with this. Because we can go a lot of different ways. Yeah. Uh, well, here, let's, get the, let's totally get this one out of the way. If it wasn't for fishermen, hunters, trappers, we wouldn't have most of the parks. And, uh, yeah, oh, that's totally have true. You're like totally your right. Program, swing sets, trails. If it wasn't for us, hunters, fishermen, and stuff like that, we wouldn't really have that many of them. Oh, yeah, you're totally right. And then putting actually like fish back into these lakes and. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Put another species of fish in the lake. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize the fisheries are usually sponsored by the, the fishing industry. You know, people buying their fishing licenses, the certain stamps, depending on what state you're in. That goes all back to the parks and the fishery. And then paying the people that protect it. Yep. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Well, let's let's start off with why why it's very important to harvest coyotes and foxes and your raccoons. Well, first of all, they have too many diseases. Yeah, raccoons have a lot good. of diseases. Then you know, like overpopulation, less food. So they're always going to be scrapping over food. Causing traffic accidents, depending on what animal as well. Yeah. Moving, moving to go find food. There's so much, they're so concentrated right there. Coyotes are, I think, probably one of the biggest uh, nuisances, depending on where you're at. So if you oh, yeah. Rid- like, if, you, if you're like a live on the outskirts of cities, you always deal with the coyotes killing your cats or even your smaller dogs. Or your uh, sheep. Sheep. Even goats. cats. Yep. Yep. Cats. But there's, you know, there's other different methods of, you know, keeping those uh, coyotes away. You know, donkeys. Yeah, the donkey donkeys. will make them coyote. Yeah, that's uh, a good certain breeds of dogs. You know, there's certain breeds of dogs that are just that's where they want to be out there, their herd dog, you know. Their protector. Yeah, the biggest thing is you want to find their dens too. Yeah, with coyotes, if they get overpopulated, mange will come in. The mange will eventually kill a coyote. Yeah. They'll have to really work on their... Oh, mange is nasty. Yeah. And it's nasty. And... I've seen a couple of coyotes with mange. Yeah. I'm like, what is up with that dog, man? You need to go get a grooming. Even deer, like, you know, deer need to be kept at a you know steady population because they yeah. will overpopulate then it's going to cause a lot of problems they're going to cause a lot of problems on your highways they're going to cause right. a lot of problems in the agricultural industry while you know feeding off of fields you know yeah, if you yeah. got a group right. of you know a group of 60 doe you know i mean they'll, they'll get that thick you let them, they'll, they'll multiply like no other. 
If you yeah, let him. So, very, so, like, you know, up in Kansas, I remember seeing clusters of 20 does together. And that's that's enough to do some damage on a field. Ain't nobody home. We have overpopulated those cool. by us. Yeah, but the cool thing about Kansas Wildlife and Parks is uh, that a lot of their uh, their public hunting lands, they actually put feed uh, plots on them. Like they put corn or they put soybean. Just keep them in that area. Yeah, it's a food That's source. Pretty- like, there'd be corn, like, around this time. And so there's probably some fields of corn in it that are, like, you know, they took a good harvest out of it, but they still left rows of corn on the stalk yeah. still there, you know? A lot of farmers up by us do that as well. Some of them just shave the ends. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, the other thing is uh, birds like uh, starlings starlings need to be kept down too because starlings are not they're an invasive species actually I think they're from over in Europe huh I don't think and we have the actually, uh, huh I don't think we have those near us they're everywhere around the US I have to go check them out. Hey, John, easy. Say hi, everybody, in the chat. We got wow. easy. We got struck by the lightning. We got John. It seems that we got Jessica in here. Hi, y'all. How y'all doing? Bunch of happy people. Like another one is a uh, snow geese. Yeah. Snow geese have a lot of problems, especially in the agricultural department, because like they'll go there and destroy a field and poop on it, and they'll just mess it messes up the whole field. Yeah, but with those, the imbalance of the field off. I'm gonna have to see if we got starlings though. Yeah, geese are probably the right around this area. <clears throat> There's a couple of people that actually get paid uh, to take their dogs to go. And actually, chase them shoot. off. Yeah, and they're it's you know, funny because they won't even come. You know, what I mean, near you up north, but down like around this area, dude, they will literally like just start like walking up to you and attacking you and hissing. Like they're they're an excellent food source. They really are. Like if you ever had a Canadian goose or a snow goose. It's like a beef. They're like beef to me. They're like, that's like the best way I describe it. They're described like a like a sirloin. Like yeah. a cheap like the best way I'd describe the meat of a goose. And it's really good for fajitas. You can make all kinds of different things with it. Even the even the, the feathers, my grandfather used to make the fletchings off it for the arrows from the goose feathers. Yeah. That's what we used to do. I mean I don't know what they were perfect. from, but we used to make uh, traditional arrows. A good ethical hunter will actually use as much as he can of his kill. Yeah, you don't want to waste Even like making something out of like certain parts of the animal. We'll and save the for uh, fishing lures for like fly fishing. Oh yeah, deer, deer, like a deer tail, perfect. Yep, buck deer tails. That white, that white bushy butt on a white tail deer, dude. Oh, it's perfect. That's where you want to tie your crappie jig with. Yeah, and their hair floats pretty good. You can make uh, dragonflies, nymphs, crickets out of the <clears> hair. <throat> from. Heck yeah, John. 
I mean, I got some of that from that rooster that I'm going to tie. I want to get me a kit here pretty soon. I got a bunch of them. Um, I can't tie but, a fly unless biases on nowadays. Yeah. My well, when day. I was up in Oklahoma uh, with my cousin and stuff, he taught me how to tie them crappy jigs. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so, like, I just want to start to get into something like that. Like, something to better do my do with my time. Maybe I can tie enough rigs and stuff like that to, like, do, like, a rig giveaway or something, you know? I should probably do that with, because I got probably about 20,000 fish hooks. For mayflies? Heck yeah. Mayflies are irritating. Oh, my goodness. Dude, crappie love mayflies, though. Crappie, yeah. Like, if you make, like, a little, like, uh, what they call it, like, an imp. I think it's called an imp fly. But if you put, like, a uh, a small jig head on it, like, a really small jig head, and make, like, like a brown little, like, yeah, a brown little bill, dude, and throw it out oh. there during the time, and crappie will eat it up. Feathers. Yeah, there's, yeah, dude. If you want to get into feathers, man, like pheasant and quail. Oh, my God. You got all kinds of cool feathers right there. Yep. Possums also. Possum? Yeah, possums will destroy your yard. Yeah, possums are a problem. Plus, yeah, there's you, really, really nothing you can do with them, really. You can cook them. Cook them. Put them on the cook them, call them, call them good. Everything's better with barbecue sauce. Don't you know? I like barbecue. <laughs> you can never go wrong with a bunch of barbecue sauce and hot sauce. <laughs> I think the biggest problem is uh that we have would be the geese and uh probably coyote. Oh, our biggest problem down here is by far our hog. Yeah, you guys got a hog problem totally. Like they destroy <laughs> Yeah, because they use their snout to look for uh, roots, right, or something like that, and grubs. Yeah. So they like they 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 throw up, like they can smell. So that's one cool thing about a a, uh, a wild hog is that they can smell into the ground. So they can smell. They're looking for the grubs and uh, roots and stuff. And they got a so hard. And so, like, what they do is they just they nudge it all up. Like, they just dig up. They nudge it. I've seen them do it. Like, that's what they do. Like, they'll get their snout and they'll just nudge it. You know, they're like, they'll just nudge and dig with their nose. It's just crazy to me watching a pig do that. Yeah. <laughs> What's crazy to me, though, is, like, your guys' soil is pretty, like, compacted compared to, like, how soft the soil is, you know, in northern climates. It just depends where you are. Like, uh, where I'm at right now, like, there's spots where you can dig three inches and hit bedrock. Oh, wow. Or, yeah. And there's other parts of uh, over here where it's totally sand. Like, we've done that before. We took an excavator, and we dug a big old pit, and we dug down probably about 12 foot, dude, and it was nothing but sand. Like, this whole property was on sand. Up here uh, at the Peach Tree, they have sand wars and stuff like that. Yeah. For the porcelain, the sand's so pure up there from the Ice Age back in the day in certain areas north of, like, Madison and... 
It's just south of Duluth. Yeah. Then we got areas around here that are normal. You know, like they brought in a lot of dirt and packed it. Yeah, cougars are eating a lot of things as well. Yeah, down cougars. here and stuff, uh, you can actually shoot a cougar with just a regular hunt line. So I guess a, I have to Google this, but supposedly a lion just got ran over uh, not too long ago on right by Chicago. I, dude, they're they're moving, dude. They move. They move a long ways. That's just crazy. It is. That's like what? Deal hole. Deal hole. I think the geese, though, would be probably the number one nuisance for us in, like, the well, like, Midwest. I think, I think, yeah, for the Midwest, is the number one nuisance, for sure. I mean, they molest every fucking park that they can fly into. <coughs> they yeah. should be. The trails are just trashed, man. Then you got the like the really really good people that feed them like oh we gotta feed them baby geese. Yeah, then they that's... stay year round. Yeah, you don't want to feed wild animals. No. Yeah, since they're getting constantly fed year round, like they, scientists have found out that some geese do stay year round in certain places because of the of the fact that they're getting constantly fed. Yep. And then you also have to think about the lights from car lots, cities. Those mess up the migration as well. Uh, grackles. You know what a grackle is? Mm. It's like a smaller. It's like a smaller bird. They're like black, like crows, but they're smaller. Okay. Um, we have a down here. We have the the grackle migration, which do these motherfuckers will take over. Uh, like uh supermarkets and stuff like that dude like that's where they, they go up there on top of those places and hang out their babies oh okay but they just work everywhere like they'll take over trees there'll be like a hundred of them in a tree like craziness like you can go in there with a fucking uh a, a shell i mean a box a case full of shells and have a good time see that sounds like a good time <laughs> but there's a, a town in like Colorado or something like that like once a year since they have such a pigeon problem that's another one pigeons uh, they have such a pigeon problem so they shut down the town for one day and they hunt pigeons they get on the rooftops everywhere like that and then they just have kids go around picking up pigeons that's weird Kind of cool though. Just a bunch of pigeons. Yeah, but you got to remember, like a lot of pigeons carry a lot of diseases. Oh yeah. I mean, it's okay to have pigeons, but it's not okay to have billions and billions of pigeons. Yep. Yeah, don't let Mike Tyson hear you. He used to breed pigeons. Some people would uh, rent hawks at certain, you know, like those little uh, falcon ears or something like that. Oh, yeah, falcon tree. Dude, oh, that's some cool shit. It really is. That's, really cool. that's a cool way of conservation. It is a really cool. It is a really, really cool way. It's uh, natural. I think yeah. it's a natural way of hunting. That's been done for thousands of years right there. Uh oh, we got the man of the hour, Roadhog. Roadhog kills. I clicked the wrong button. Oh yeah, goose hunting is a lot of fun. I grew up goose hunting with my grandfather. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to drop the link in the chat. 
so anybody else can come up. I know Northwoods would be right up though, but he messed up. He's like, oh, I pressed the wrong button. Come on, son. Yeah, I grew up in Kansas, uh, goose hunting. I'll be right here with you, man. So we did a lot of Canadian goose and snow. Bam, there is... The link, anybody is welcome to come up. Hey, friend. All right. <laughs> friend, how you doing, friend? I'm very well. <laughs> you hitting buttons there, friend? Oh, my God. Roadhog says he hasn't grown up yet. Which is a good Grown thing. Up. That's good, Roadhog. Don't ever grow up. Be a Toys R Us kid. Yeah, always be a Toys R Us kid. So, me being a conservationist hunter, right? Ethical. Uh, you should have totally see what the kids look like today. Oh my god, this dude was so... When I walked out of the woods... Oh my goodness. The look on his face was just epic. It was just like, he just looked at me like, oh my goodness. I pissed everybody off there. I don't think people hunt where I went. Like, seriously? Besides the people that own the land on the other side. Also, when you buy uh, park passes... That helps with conservation as well. Yeah, it does. Your state parks. Some people complain, oh, I got to pay for that. Well, it ain't that bad. The bears. The bears. <laughs> wolves. Wolves are a pretty big yeah, problem. Yeah, wolves for are a big one. Wolves are <laughs> What was it? I read an article a while back about the wolves, like somewhere, like destroyed an elk population, pretty much. Uh, Yosemite. That's where it was. Like they, they were just demolishing these elk. Yeah, I think Yosemite got trashed by all. Oh! Excuse me. <laughs> by all the uh, wolves that they reintroduced. Uh, also, the Apostle Islands, uh, all the moose and elk that got put there, a lot of them got eaten up because the wolves will travel across mm. Lake Superior because it's frozen. Oh, yeah, John got all the good stuff. Oh, what's he got? I'm not clicking buttons. He got the elks and the cougars, all kinds of stuff. He's out there in Oregon, though. Nice. <laughs> They might have some grizzlies up there too, don't they? Oh, I think so. <laughs> we need grizzlies. Our elk population is getting really large, though, which is really cool. It's getting so good that there's elk probably about two miles from our property, which was really amazing for me to see. Yeah, but you ain't gonna hit one. If you do, you're you're going to prison. Well, if you hit one with a truck, you ain't going to prison. No, but you ain't getting it either. Yeah, and your car's going to be total. Yep, that's like hitting a truck. Huh. <laughs> like, what happened? That went well. 
You ever seen that like that short that was going around for a while? They're pulling at moose in that blue car. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. What? There was a short like a while back that was going around. Whoa. Excuse me. That they were pull, pulling this moose off of a, a uh, blue car. Like it just oh. literally like ran over the top of it, like flattened the top of the car out. Oh, no, I don't think I've seen that one. Yeah, I think it killed the dude. Oh. I think that's one of the problems that they have at the state uh, or the national forests or whatever those state parks are where they let you feed the Forget that the <laughs> wild wood turkeys. Fucking deal hall. Fucking deal hall. We can hunt the wolves up in Wisconsin. That's the only reason why I got my concealed carry is because of the wolves up there. Hi, Amanda. Amanda! That's an awesome lady right there. Now, speaking of conservation, uh, they uh, Australia. Like Australia is they're they're all about conservation. Yep. Somebody let fair or uh, cats go out wild, and I guess there's a guy on vice uh, that goes cat hunting. Cat man. Cat man. Yeah. Did you get to see that yet? Yeah. He's like, I give cats new homes, and so did he has see- like a big old like sack on his like lazy boy like that full of like this pelts of cats that he shot you see his coat yeah <laughs> people don't realize that too cats will destroy uh, an environment oh yeah dude they're they're apex predators man hawaii uh the mongoose they had to bring those in because of the snake population and then the mongoose got overpopulated I think a lot of people take it for granted, though, because we get a lot of crap for being hunters and all that. Yeah. It's like, hey, I have to tell you. Yeah, wolf pelts are big money. So is mink. And yeah. fishers and stuff like that. But those little some... things, dude, those little weasel things did it up there in, like, Alaska. Dude, I did a little research on them. Those things are vicious. I like, to like see they those take down, box. they take down things. Like they'll take down a damn rabbit, dude. Like twice the size of them. Like, Wah! yeah, they're cool. <laughs> I dig those. Another little uh, are those things. Uh uh oh, my mic is. Freaking messed up. Nice. Nice. Dillhole nice. says. I think Dillhole's messed up. <laughs> A lot of the times, people in the small cities will, or the big cities will try to. Hate laws too. <laughs> that that's funny. No, that's not Peachy's no deal. What? Oh, Amanda thought you was Dill. No. Yeah. Dill Sasquatch. Nope. Like um, Sasquatch. Like somebody you don't want to meet down like a a dead end road in the middle of the night. Oh shoot! Speaking of Sasquatches, when I was out in that area to go hunting, I drove in a city called Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Yep, Bigfoot. But it's not for like the Sasquatch. It's for the Bigfoot Indian. Yeah. Or Bigfoot Native American. 
I was like, this is cool. But here, here's like some issues that we are dealing with, though, when it comes to conservation. It's like expansion of cities. And so like a lot of these uh, condominiums and stuff like that are like backing these places that are supposed to be sanctuary for wildlife. Cities, you know, are very shady with doing that. Yeah. And there's one park that was a, a nat, like a, a really nice conservation park and all that. Uh, had prairie wetlands. Oh, it got donated to the city. The city put a clause in there that nobody can buy it because it's like protected. Now the city is going to be putting a uh, municipal building there where their salt trucks will be. Nah. I watched them cut down. All well, you've seen the video of them cutting all the trees. Yeah, sad, man. Dude, that was a whole like three acre park. All of a sudden, whoop, nothing. Like completely gone. It's like, I'm happy to have what I have right here. I got woods. I can manage these woods. And I'm keeping it pretty wild. I even got deer coming through, you know? So that's pretty good. <clears throat> that's actually deer. really cool. It is really cool, dude. I'm really, really tickled with it. I really am. You can also donate to your DNR and your uh, local parks. There's a good question for you. What are we hunting with? Well, it depends what we're hunting for. If I'm hunting for something small games, I got air rifles or I use a 410 shotgun or the old twist, uh, trusty 22. I think uh, oh. Northwood, what do you hunt with there? Uh, me personally, uh, I will use a rock, spear, crossbow, rifles. Stand still. Yeah. I like that stuff. I like primitive survival and bushcraft. That's like my main thing, the way I like to go out and hunt sometimes. If I'm on state land, usually I'll do bow. Um... I might do rifle depending on where I'm at. Yeah, like I got that. Uh, for what I just use around the house for like varmints, I got that single shot 22 air rifle. Then I got that single shot. They're both break action. Uh, 177, but they're both like 1,000 feet per second. So. Like, they smack something. They hit it. Oh, no. We got trouble in the house. We got the Roberts de Garage. Oh. Hell, yeah, dude. Like, I want to get into that. I want to do, do some, like, uh, primitive hunting and fishing. It's fun. It's not easy. Oh, I'm still learning. I've already dabbled into uh, primitive fishing with a little piece of wood. Only, I think uh, the dams style fishing for primitive is the only way I'm really good at spearing. Yeah, but. You gotta be really careful where you're at because it's against the law of spear. Well, I've done it before, but I'm not gonna say where. I've done uh, it before. Carp, carp are hard to spear. You can spear carp. Very, you can't spear very trout. Hard. I do like looking from my experience. Like I used one of those frog gig spears, fish spears, from uh, okay. well. They had like the four months. Uh, gig. Yeah, a gig. gig. So I did a carp. It bent it. Oh, 
crazy. So we so I did a second one to bend it. Bit of catfish or something like that, like it, it grabbed it. Yeah, I had to pay five thousand dollars for each fish. I was poaching. It was at night. Yeah. You wanna hear the story? Yeah, go for it. So um, I don't know nothing, right? Because growing up in Hawaii, we were able, we were able to spear fish, right? So me, two of my friends, uh, we were all 18. I'm Wisconsin resident. They were from Illinois. Uh, one of them was like, we should go up to uh, that creek up there because the salmon are running. I was like, I'm down for that. So what we did was we took the bar truck, you know, from our parents' bars and uh, yeah. threw some baseball bats in there, uh, a spear. We all, and it was an S10 pickup, 80s style, so it was tiny, right? Stick shift. We go drive all the way out, you know, to where we were going, park the truck, you know, trying to be all sneaky, right? It's dark out, right? So we all hop inside the creek, you know, we're walking up looking for the salmon, see a lot of dead ones, you know, smells nasty and stuff. Then you see certain other areas. Now, theoretically, you're supposed, you can fish the creek, but you can't snag, right? I was like, well, if you can't snag, then okay. Um, so we ended up spearing two fish and stuff. And by the time we got back to the truck, we seen this little car go by and stopped. And we we're like, what is that? And uh, we didn't come to think of anything, you know. We hopped in that Chevy, start driving. Next thing you know, out of nowhere, just like four brand new Dodge Ram sport style trucks when the new Ram style came out in the 90s, the new box or the new. Like, <laughs> stuff. Oh my goodness. Yep, that was a nightmare. They almost took the truck, a bunch of other stuff. They made us un like, take everything out of our pockets. It was a nightmare. I ended up going to court. Community service. I actually had to paint uh, an armory and over at the uh, National Guard building. I painted their uh, basement. I painted uh, the um, what basketball court. I learned how to mop the uh, the whole basketball court at the armory. I had to do that for six months every day, mop that floor. The first and only time I ever got busted with weed, okay? Thank you, JB. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're talking about <coughs> stories out in the, well, <coughs> doing stuff. That was the last time. <coughs> <personally>. <coughs> well, I was out fishing. <coughs> <coughs> and like, I was with a buddy of mine, and I just got some good bud. Like, I just got some good stuff, and we just both took a hit. You know, we, like, we decided, you know, we're, we're just going to fish, you know, put it up. So I put it up, and next thing I know, here comes that damn green truck. He gets out. He goes over there. He's like, all right, where's the weed at? I'm like, man. It's in my backpack, dude. Like, I was just straight up with him. <laughs> dude, I had a fucking... Excuse my language. I had about three grams of that good stuff. And then I had probably about a half ounce of some Reggie. And then I had a pipe. But only thing he hit me with was the paraphernalia. Oh. That's a ticket. Yep, paid it off. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, quit smoking cigarettes. They're bad for you. Yeah, I know. Also in conservation, um, hunters and fishermen and people that do the parks actually help people uh, pick up, you know, the parks. Yep, help pick up the parks. Uh, a lot of your uh, proceeds that you put into for like licenses and stuff would actually go back, go back to the youth to train them for hunters uh, hunters safety course. Mm -hmm. 
So that money goes right back to that for hunter safety. Builds nature preserves buildings for uh, all kinds of variety of stuff. I know he probably did steal the weed, man. Said it stunk his truck up. Prairie it path. It really, it really was. I was like, yeah, yeah. And like, also, I didn't really care. I got busted. Like, I was so high. <laughs> <laughs> you got to also remember uh, some people that don't even hunt or anything will donate to uh, their local forestry. Yeah. I think hunting and fishing and, like, camping is a part of America. And, like, it really is. And I feel like it's being threatened right now. Well, a lot of it's also getting yeah. bought up. Dude, because like in the 60s and stuff, like camping and fishing and all that was like the thing to do. Like every, you know, everybody was at the lakes and stuff in the 60s and, you know, 50s, 60s and 70s, man. That, that, was, that was the jam. Was the go out to the lake. Take the family to the lake. Yep. Now companies have depleted most of the natural resources from the lakes. Yeah. Look at Lake Mead, how much it's, to, you know what I mean? They're trying to say that's like whatever, you know, the climate, but there's, okay. That's a, something to take in the water out. Like even, even like, it, it just, we, we get, like, there's a lot of people fishing, right? So when you get a lot of people fishing, you're not going to go out there and catch a lot of fish like you used to. Like, I yeah. remember being a kid, dude, going out there and just wrecking the fish with my grandparents. Like, I remember going out there when, like, growing up in Kansas, going crappie fishing, man. We said they're just catching a limit in, like, a matter of two hours and then go back home. Because I remember I used to be disappointed because I still wanted to be out there fishing. Yeah, I remember those days as a kid. Like, I wasn't done. <laughs> I don't want to stop fishing. That was having fun. I don't care if we had to keep fish or not, man. I'll just throw them right back. Go back out and get some more. Wow. I miss the old school reservoirs in California where they would stock the trout and you go out there and Yeah, California is turning into a waste. I mean, like, California, they're in California, man, they do have some really good lakes for bass. I do have to say that. I've seen, uh, I don't know what the names of lakes are, but I know there's a couple of them that they, they're really badass uh Spotted bass and stuff like that. That's another thing. Sometimes people will let their pet fish go and they'll devastate ponds. Yeah, like don't ever release your pet fish into lakes because of the fact or streams. Or let due to the fact that that fish could have a certain disease and it could wipe out a whole population of fish. <clears throat> or I'll leave babies. Yep. Yeah. Some people have put goldfish in their ponds. That ruins them too. Yeah. Goldfish are ruin a pond. <laughs> it just depends how big of a pond you got. If you got like a, you know, a good like ten to twenty acre pond, man, you can have some koi in that set of gun. Yeah, I'll probably end up putting some koi in. Uh, no, I don't think I'm gonna have koi. Koi or man, koi will eat up all your fish. Smaller fish, yeah. Yeah. They'll do that. I had my koi, I didn't think they would eat the goldfish, man. Every time I try to feed my Oscar, the koi would just 
devour all the uh, goldfish instantly. Yeah. I was like, what are you guys doing? Like, this is stupid. Like, this is getting expensive. <laughs> We're just feeding the fish. And that's another thing. Koi and carp and stuff like that, they don't just eat algae and suck up the bottom. They also eat protein stuff, too. They don't eat... I've caught them off... My mom's caught them off chicken liver. I've caught them off chicken liver. Caught them off stink bait before. Strawberries. Well, of course, they like their strawberries. You also got to think about conservation when, if you're a boater, you know, certain bugs and insects and stuff will attach to your propellers in the bottom of your boat, the algae, zebra mussels. Zebra mussels is a bad, you don't want zebra mussels because then they're going to introduce white perch. And once you have white perch, they're hard to get rid of. You're talking about decades and decades of fishing them out of your reservoir. <laughs> A lot of places don't even allow you to use them. Because white perch are so invasive. Like, they'll take over a lake. Like, there's a lake in uh, Kansas that we like to go fish at. Awesome Channel Cat Lake. But, man, there's no, no shad there hardly no more. The, the White perch have demolished the shad. Oh. And yeah, dude, it's it's horrible. Like I can go there and like wreck the white perch. I can go there and probably if I spend it out there a whole day, probably catch me about two, three hundred of them. Holy cow. Is there a limit? No. We got Roland Loft in the chat. What's up, Roland Loft? Jeff? And being truthful with your local DNR, you know, about like if you see a crazy animal, say, hey, I seen this wolf. Let them know. I think a lot of people that live in the large cities or metropolitan areas <laughs> kind of ruin it for people that live out in the farms and stuff. Because all the wolves that are around our property, you know, they're a nuisance. But people in the city are like, oh my God, save the wolves. Well, they are in uh, Kansas and Nebraska. The Amish actually get, a get, get together around, you know, certain parts of the year. And then do a coyote drive. Oh, that's cool. Yep. Imagine. <laughs> 50 that's Amish. Really do. That's got to be crazy, you know what I mean? Think about it. Because that's a big community. Just legit walking down a whole property line. They got guns, right? I always wondered that. Do the Amish use firearms? Heck yeah, Jeff. That's awesome to hear, man. Well, I can't You're read the chat out of my glasses. Here, here, the old man. Oh, that's super cool. Oh, look at that. There's some really cool pigeons out there. Oh, what are you? Oh, man. God darn it. There ain't nothing going on with me. <coughs> just dealing with some shit and just going to work through it. I need to get out and go do some shit. I need to go hunting. That's what I did today. I got to invest in a new GoPro. I'll tell you that. This GoPro is not wanting to hey, work yeah, right. Guns, man. They'll pull a shotgun out on you real quick. Just 
Speaking of shotguns. I like them. <laughs> oh, yeah, Rhode, I've actually seen his pigeons. <coughs> In real life. <laughs> <coughs> I have to check them out. That was last year, though. It could be different right now. Harassing hunters and fishermen are not really cool either. No, and I deal with that, and you have to deal with that. Like, you even caught that on camera, that little asshole. Yeah, the one when I was fishing. Yeah, that guy's a chode. <laughs> I was having fun, too. I was live streaming it. I think they took that down. They did? Yeah, I can't watch the clips or nothing. I don't know where that video is. Oh, dude, what's up with this stupid GoPro? I hate the GoPros, dude. Like, Road, what, what, what about on the farm? Like, the conservation effort on the farm? Like, how's that going for you? Like, you're removing all the diapers. So Just gonna draw the, the predators in closer. Oh yeah, I would think right. The road has a lot of uh, you know livestock. He has a lot of goats. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure he has them. Uh, the coyotes and the koi dogs and all that come in. He said he does. Yeah, the koi dogs are a whole different breed too. Or the koi wolves, they call them. That's a mix between a wolf and a coyote, ain't it? <laughs> no, I just shaved my head, man. I just... I was starting to look crazy, so I just went... Meow, 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 meow. And no more mountain man. Crazy evil mountain man. I'm a mountain man. Dude, I won't cut it. I won't cut it for like two months. And I, you guys will see like it gets all kind of crazy. Like right here. They're like, that's a big patch. Yeah, that's what I'm What do you think the worst thing about conservation is? The worst thing about conservation is the people that don't like play with it, you know? The ones that abuse the system, I think. So that's what like makes conservation even harder. And so then they become stricter. And I even got on the right track of this. Yeah. I mean, because, like, if you got a fishery that's getting depleted and they go out there and they do a, you know, a study to see what the population's like, then they're going to cut DAC limits. They're going to cut, you know, make a bigger lot size, slot size for your, you know, to keep them. And so it's just going to make everything a lot more complicated. So I think that's like the downside. Because like when you got people abusing the system, then prices go up. Yeah. 
I mean, if you got like if you got like the average Joe just going out there and doing it, and but he knows when to stop, then yeah, it's okay. But if you got like a hundred people going out there each day and then doing that same practice, then it's just gonna be fucking. It's gonna be devastating. But sometimes in certain lakes and ponds, it's good to take out big majorities of fish, though. It's like in uh, bass ponds, do you like if you want a big bass pond, it's always good to go out there and fish it and take out the smaller fish out. Because then the, 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 the competition for food is down. Well, look at the fisheries that make all the fish to put back in the oceans and the rivers and lakes. Well, there's somebody in here that I kind of like admire for what he does. I want to talk about it. It's, it's coon hunting, man. Coon hunting is a big part. Coons are, you know, destructive. Yeah. Coons will eat your, sandwich, eat your eggs. Like, they're, they're just, they're everywhere, dude. We'll look at it like this also, because Russia and China normally buys most of your uh, coon pelts. Yeah. Like, a lot of people don't realize that. And now with this war, uh, the pelts are going to be really, really not selling as much. Yeah. And the beavers. Actually, I should check out what the prices are, too. Might be able to get a sweet deal on some pelts. Since it's, it's like, like you know, giving a dog a purpose, man. Those dogs live for that, man. They just get all kinds of giddy up in them, dude. They're just all super excited just to get in yeah. that damn box or to go down the road and get out and go run and go find a coon, dude. They get super excited. That's a conservation. A lot of people take that for granted, too. Yeah, that's a that's an old art, though. Like, that's a lot of, you know, a lot of people take the old arts that this country is brought on in consideration, you know, like the fur trade, you know, the fur trade was a lot of our economy back in the 1800s. Yep. And a way to eat. Yeah. It was a constant way to eat because it was trapping. Heck, all you had to do is just go set a trap line and go, Chill for a couple days, go do what you got to go do, and then go back, go check that trout line, and you got some stuff. And a trout line, too. And a trout line. Trout lines are good. Limb lines. See, I don't really like a trout line because it's, like, it's a lot. I like swimming, so I don't like trout lines. I always think there's a trout line running across yeah, the water. If you have a boat or a canoe, a trout line is awesome. But if you're doing it from the land, limb lines. I need to bring my canoe down because I think I can go hunting on this island. I just got to figure out how to get it. Heck yeah. Just make sure you can carry a deer on that damn thing with you. My canoe? Yeah. yeah. It's gotten super quiet out. Something's around then. That's always spooky. When your forest gets quiet, makes you wonder what predators are there. It's like, I don't know, man. There's something looking at me. We got a fox that moves around in here. I've seen him. He's beautiful, man. 
But he is oh, yeah. slot. Cool. They met walleyes in Wisconsin also. What was it? Snare nets or whatever they're called? I forgot what they are. Yeah, the, the snare field. nets, the walleyes and stuff like that. The snare nets will devastate a fish population. Yeah, we know a guy that did a gill net. And walleye, that's another thing. Like, walleye are not a fish that just grows big in a couple of years. You know, it actually takes a while for a walleye to get to 12 inches. So you want to hear something funny? Uh, there's a world record walleye. It's like 29 pounds uh, right outside of Chicago in uh, Lake Tampere. Yeah. And I bet those walleyes are nothing but seven to eight, eight years old. Some of them are probably older than that. Yeah, it's like a, it ooh. takes a while for them to get big like that. Even your muskies and stuff like that. It takes a while to get big like that. I love eating a muskie. Muskie is one of my favorite fishes to eat. Even your flathead, like even a 30-pound flathead, that's, you know, six to seven years right there, it seems like. Because that's, that's, that's a lot of a fish. 30-pound flathead, that's a, that's a big fish. That's a lot of nuggets. That's a lot of nuggets right there, yeah. I mean, you just got to imagine what that fish is eating to get that big. All the largemouth bass and everything like that. Like, you want to talk oh. about a fish that oh, is the part. apex predator of the freshwater world is the large, I mean, is the flathead catfish. They are the apex predator of the, the, the freshwater world. I mean, wherever flathead catfish are, I mean, they're the, they're the, they're eating everything. Yeah, they don't care. No. Come on, GoPro hookup. And Let's I think certain fish prefer certain other things to eat too, like certain other fish. Like blue cat love crappie. But blue cat's really good to eat too. I think that's like the best eating catfish you can get is a blue cat. Yeah, about eighteen inches yeah. long. Even something bigger than that, like even you know, ten pounder, twelve pounder. You know, you bleed them out, man. That's good meat. Nice white, good meat. Like, there should be no shame in, like, digging into some damn catfish like that, man. I mean, I've even made it where it tastes like chicken. I like chicken. I think the coyotes are probably our worst problem we got on the property. The bobcats are cool. The wolves are cool. But the coyotes, I'm not digging the coyotes. Those are probably the most irritating thing we have. Because that's messing up my deer. Technically, bears are a nuisance, too. We have a really big overpopulation of uh, black bear in our area. Yeah. See, that's one thing I want to eat, too. I want to try some black bear. I got to figure out how to clean the jerky, but I actually want to have, like, a roast or something. Backstrap of a bear is pretty good. Yeah, and like it's... that. This is special. I got two backstraps uh, still in the freezer. I got to cook before I put the other ones in. If I go, well, yeah, I should go hunting tomorrow. Hey, 
Heck yeah. It's a lot of gas money. Yeah, coyotes are nosy, but they are smart. And they're assholes. Just a wee bit. Why is he not being nice? But I'll barter for bear meat. <sighs> I made something really good the other night. It was a couple nights ago. I took some deer summer, uh, it was deer uh, breakfast sausage. And I put some potatoes and onions in there, and I took a jar of pesto. Oh. It was so good. And I put something else in it, then we give it a kick. And I'll tell you what, that little spice I could put in there, man, I was sitting there farting the next day, and that's the way you smelt my farts with that. You know, in the video I took of me going through the the woods, you can hear me fart. <laughs> it was crazy, man. I had a chili dog, and literally, wow. it, was, it was literally like this, dead silent, but then all you hear was like... <sighs> I was like, oh, and I hope nobody heard that. I better go fucking take a shit somewhere in the forest. Yeah. At least it kept me warm. I was sweating, man, trying to get back to my Jeep. <laughs> well, I'm going to be right back. I got somebody come up in the driveway, so I'm going to go take care of it, and I'll be right back, all right? All right. I wish I can read the chat. Sunfish for fish will be right back. Today we're talking about conservation. The impacts of conservation. Yeah, technically you want to buy a fishing license. Buy a hunting license. Take your hunting classes. Take somebody hunting with you, too. I think that's uh, something overlooked. Sponsor somebody. Bring somebody fishing. Or bring somebody hunting. Or if you have somebody that doesn't like you hunting, bring them hunting with you once. That's always good. This way you can uh, experience hunting with a vegan or a non-hunter. And you guys can talk about the different topics, why and what they like and what they don't like about the topic. We have the biggest problem though with our coyotes are totally trashing us. Oh, yeah. I think after this stream, I'm going to barbecue some chicken. I want to see you barbecue that rabbit. Dude. I swear that dude has, like, a vest on or something. I shot this rabbit. And like, I ain't going to lie, dude. I'm a terrible shot right now. I guess I get just too stoned and I can't shoot. Like, bam, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> no, this damn rabbit comes up here and, like, I got this uh, corn pile right up here. And he'll come up there and nibble on that corn and he'll stand up, look around, and I'm like, okay, I'll get my rifle. And, bah! Shoot right next to him. I'm like, ah, leave. He's a sneaky one. He's got camouflage. What I think I need to do is just stabilize it. I mean, 
This is a hefty air rifle. Yeah. Get the scope on it. Yeah. I get the scope to the neighbor, though. Uh, I do laser. pretty good. Put a laser on it. Laser? Laser be cool. Laser, laser, laser. And I got another one just like it. That's a twenty-two caliber. You know, they do make it harder yeah. for uh, hunters also sometimes to get uh, your tags. Yeah. Depending on where you're at. They do a lottery. So it's not like everybody can actually go hunt the animal. A lot of people don't understand that. It's not like, you know, you can just go out and buy. Like right now, there's no way you'd be able to get a tag for a doe in our county, you know, for private land. Well, I know one thing not to get rolling loft is goat cheese. Don't give that dude no goat cheese. Yeah, you won't smell the rest of the end of it. Limburger cheese? Goat cheese, man. Yeah, rolling loft, you give him goat cheese, man. You're done. You're hanging out with him, you're done. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's horrible, dude. Just plain horrible. <laughs> be a, oh, that'd be ferocious out hunting in the winter time. Get that good fart going up your bibs. Just feel the warmth go up. <laughs> yep. Oops. And then you move and you get that faint smell coming out of you know the top of your jacket. See, I ain't kidding. <laughs> Get more goat cheese. That's hilarious. I do like cheese. Yeah, I you never get made goat cheese. You get out that damn floor, you go. <gasps> <gasps> yeah, like, oh shit, what did I do? Oh man, I it's never made it to that place today. What are you doing? Come on. Come on. We got a like, journey in here. Like, come on. Come on. Give me hugs. All right, go. Wouldn't mind doing some coon hunting though. Do a coon coon chili's pretty good. Oh yeah. I gotta thaw out one of those uh, back straps and cook it up. Bobcat back straps. Uh, if I can get them, I gotta take a, a trapping class. So I gotta find somebody. Uh, yeah, I gotta find somebody that's gonna be doing that trapping. Uh, CDs and like uh, pieces of fabric, like if you hang them up in trees in front of the like the, where the trap is, they like to like go through and try to get it. They're like naturally like house cats in a way. Yep, they like birds too. Yeah, I gotta get that. Dude, dude. Though. I gotta find somebody to give me a my number. Uh, Trapper J actually does pretty good with them bobcats. Yeah, he does. He's yeah. I've seen him catch a lot of them. I just can't catch one until I take that class. I gotta have the stamp of approval. What? Well, so technically, have that stamp of approval. 
Well, no, I can do it just because it's our farm, you know, but I want to take class just for giggles. For giggles? Yeah, I want to see what they're, you know, because each guy is going to have their different, you know, technique. And me, I look like I'm in my, like, late 20s, so they're always going to treat me like I'm an idiot. Dude, I've heard, st okay, so like prey dogs and gophers, yeah, so John just triggered something for me. Thank you, John. Uh, prey dogs, man, they're bad. Prey dogs are very, very bad. Like, they destroy some property. Yeah, they do. Um, gophers, too, like, you know, they, they're thorough. So, like, I know for certain, like, there's people out there that just, they sit there with, like, a 17 HMR or a 22 Win Mag and just blah, 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 you know? Target practice all day. We got a nice groundhog uh, right by us. I wouldn't mind eating. But, it, like, what I, like, you got to worry about tribunosis, so you really got to make sure you cook it good. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, Loaded. bobcat. Yeah. Well, I'm going to eat a bobcat because there's that den on the property, so I'm totally going to be eating that. Yeah. I'm going to try to rotisserie that, throw it on a uh, fire and just kind of slowly spin it. Rotisserie, baby. Why, well, yeah. I think that would be good. I like that. Heck yeah. And a lot of people don't realize it's expensive to go hunting. Especially if you go out of state. Sometimes you pay yeah. like five times the amount of the normal person. Later, rolling. Enjoy. I sure will. And then you got to think about also, some people will take advantage of like, you know, over harvesting and not, you know, doing what they're supposed to. You know, they'll go and just literally... Say they they only got two tags to go out and get like ten deer. You got those people yeah. that will just go out fishing and hunting without buying the license. One thing that really pisses me off too is like uh, people that go out like dove hunting and stuff like that. Like they don't clean the birds. They shoot them, but they don't clean them. Or what about people that go bird hunting that shoots the bird and don't take it? Yep. Or people that will poach a deer and just kind of like leave most of the good meat behind. Yeah, just they just take what they want. Yeah, like you could have just took both, you know what I mean? Both of the shoulders. It's sad dude, that people do that. And the neck's got a lot of meat. You know, next pretty good ten. That's good. I mean, that's why you you want to grind most of your hamburger though. With that neck. Yeah. Usually, what I do with most of my deer is grind it all up. Well, heck yeah. Well, we're about to call it quits on here too, guys. Yeah, it's getting late. I got to wake up early so I can go get me some more deer. I think I'll go do some hunting in the morning. Yeah, I got to go in here and get this grill going and prep some chicken and get it on that grill so I can, like, I want to I wanna cook some chicken just to cook it just so I can have it to make different meals throughout the week. Yeah, I got to start doing meal prepping hardcore. 
winter's and, coming, so prices might go up. We might get into a nuclear war. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> The way things are going right now with all that shit, who knows? Dude, who knows if they're even telling the truth? Yeah, technically, I might go do some fishing tomorrow. The river's completely low, so it's musky season right now. Oh, really? Camp on an island. I'd be like, see you later, chat. <laughs> Porn bomb eek. <laughs> that was so funny. I was like, no, I ain't letting porn bomb up here. No, my no. luck will be a little man ringing around his wiener. My God, it was road. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. I remember that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Oh, yeah. Well, I might go live when I'm hunting tomorrow. Probably Heck yeah. Like, trying to decide if I want to like leave tonight, camp out, you know, somewhere along the river there, and wake up and go. I gotta look at the regulations <laughs> on nighttime camping. Yeah, just remember, everybody, you gotta be ethical when you go out hunting and fishing. Be yeah, respectful always... and leave it, leave it as you came to it. Even make it better in a way, like by picking up trash. Yeah, always bring an extra garbage bag with you when you leave. At Except least that's can, really important. Well, if it, you can also, if you want, you know, like we're on YouTube, grab a garbage bag, <laughs> do a video of you picking up garbage that makes you look good. Do well, this is not about making you look good. It's just about practice what you <laughs> preach. You <know? laughs> I find all kinds of cool stuff when I'm out hunting. I like picking up garbage. Yeah. I found shotgun shells, deer calls. Also, when you're out hunting or out in the woods, never remove things from a tree. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, if you see something hanging in a tree, like a piece of ribbon tied to it, you want to leave that there. Because you never know, man. That might be a way for that person to get back to where that little thing is. All right, we got to start over now. All right. Man here. Welcome, everybody. This is a podcast about conservation and wildlife management. Today, we're going to discuss ethical treatments of cultivating animals and harvesting. Sometimes you will have wild animals come into your area as geese, oak, bobcats, cougars. You would like to harvest them. <laughs> yeah. Put and snook them. Get it right. Rick Flair. Fossil Creek poo. Oh, Fossil Creek's up. Or if you got that new video of the fishing trucker, we got the the fishing trucker Jeffy Poo. Whoop whoop whoop! Yay yay! Hello, darkness, my friend. Well, by gosh. I don't know what's going on, but I know what's going down. <laughs> well, with that, we are going to cut it off here pretty shortly, though, for real. Stuff got to get done. You Thank just got to... Ouch. Uh-oh, Brian. You better watch out. He's calling your name, Brian. There's a cat over here in heat. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. Over here, I'll put you out of your misery. <laughs> no more babies from you. 
Here, kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> can, can a tuna fish will do amazing things. Actually, that's a you good idea. I should, go, I should go get a can of sardines, drill some holes in it, hang it up in a wait, tree. Wait, wait, wait a second. We got a situation. We got to help out a fellow YouTuber. You can't upload. Uh, Fossil Creek can't upload. Uh, one thing you need to check uh, there, Brian, is... Uh, <laughs> Uh, one thing you got to do is uh, make sure that your app is updated through the yep. Play Store or whatever. Um, another thing is... Uh, Hashtag upgrade. Yeah, you got to upgrade. And um, if that doesn't work, uh, uninstall and reinstall. And if that don't work, pay uh, Sunfish for Fish to upload it for you. $500. We will give you PayPal. <laughs> he's like, hey, Ooh, you. Fossil Creek. He's, no, he's not. He's like, yeah. Yeah, Kenny. When's the next time you're going hunting Fossil Creek? He said, as soon as I get that damn cabin done. Oh, yeah. Like, when is he heading out west? When's he going to upload that new video? I don't know. Can he? Bro. I don't know when he'll upload his videos. Who knows? I might be in one of them. But you'll never know. Because it didn't snow. He said he's about to upload a new one tomorrow. To YouTube? Upload a new editor tomorrow. He said he didn't want to deal with it tonight. He's like, it, it frustrates him. He doesn't want to do it tonight. But we wanted to see it tonight. <laughs> We're trying to live vicariously through you. Now, uh, Fossil Creek, do you have like a, a schedule that you normally upload your videos from? Well, the 20 bucks is cheap, and the quality's down low. Well, when's the next time he's going coon hunting? Who? Brian. Brian don't coon hunt. He don't? What do you do, kennels? You just have dogs? He has a dog. Oh. He's not like his cousin? I, I... Dude, like, he hasn't been for a while. Brian! You gotta go do some coon hunting. I will super chat you if you go coon hunting. <laughs> super chats are coming your way. It's gonna snow. Man, that buck was so huge. I wonder if I'll be able to see what it looks like on the camera. Scared the shit out of that guy on the mountain bike. He was excited. Yeah. 40 seconds. 30 seconds. Oh, here goes my fart. Sorry, guys. Flatulence season is upon us. Oh, no. All right, so we're going to take Brian alligator hunting then, right? Or coon hunting? Coon or hunting. Alligator hunting. 
Clayton's going to take us catfishing, right? Yeah, we're going to go catfishing with Clayton. Clayton. The certified, the, the certified nut. He's a nut case. He's certifiable. He's a suitor. Well. Chili dog. You like chili dogs? I like chili Dude, dogs with extra mm, onions. That sounds really good. There's a place called Portillo's. They used to be good, but now they sold it. They had a back mm -hmm. in the day. They had a pretty good chili dog, but now they buy like smaller uh, hot dogs, so they're not like their old school ones. Yeah, you can never go wrong with a chili dog. Uh, there's some Italian beefs that are pretty good too around here. Uh, all right. Well, on that note, peace out, See everybody. You Enjoy. My GoPro hot. My GoPro really hot. Okay, everybody. Thank you for viewing. Yeah, yeah, baby. Oh my god, they kill Kitty. See you later. Bye guys. <laughs> later, y'all. Peace out.